Hey guys, it's Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with another cue and haircut video. You guys ask the questions, request the haircuts, and I do the haircuts for you. So uh, if you have any haircut ideas, post them in the comments below or use the hashtag on all of our social media, hashtag free salon education, and we'll get those video requests in. Uh, love this video series, having a great time with it. Um, today's question came from Duke Strange. Duke asks uh, to do a boxed bob. So I thought that would be a cool challenge for today, something fun. Uh, a lot of you guys can use the techniques from this video on your day-to-day -day salon life. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think of the video. So post your comments below uh, in the comments. Makes sense. Um, post your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Hit like on the video, please, and share it with your friends. Here we go. Let's get started on our step-by-step -step boxed bob. All right, guys, so we're going to start off by parting the hair directly down uh, the center, and then we're going to work that down center back, and then I'm going to take my next parting from the high point of the head down to behind the ear. I want to make sure that that's a direct straight line. That's going to uh, come in handy when we do the haircut uh, as we move forward. So section both sides off, keeping that center parting. This is a very balanced haircut, so because it's balanced, I want to make sure that I keep that center parting in there. And that's it. That's the sectioning. So again, going back down center back, I'm going to split the head into two sections, uh, completely even sections. And I'm going to work a diagonal forward line uh, parting from the occipital bone to directly behind the ear. And then we're just going to comb that over and clip it away. Same thing on the opposite side, slight diagonal forward, um, leaving out about an inch and a half of hair from the occipital bone down to the nape and combing the hair directly up and clipping it away. Clipping the hair like this makes it easy for me to go in and take another parting and work my way up the haircut. So uh, something to definitely try out if you're not doing it already. Now we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna draw a straight line across the back. I'm using my blacksmith fit uh, beak scissor. I love this scissor. The, the blade is so skinny that it gets into those nice tight spots. It's the perfect scissor for precision cutting on fine to medium hair. Because the blade is so skinny, um, if you're working with coarser hair, uh, it's going to have a little bit more of a struggle getting through it. So this is a, a very uh, specific scissor for precision cutting on fine to medium hair. Now, uh, I want to check my comb. I want to make sure that, that parting lines up with the, uh, the jawline and where I want the haircut to go. Then I'm going to go through with my blacksmith fit scissor. And this one is a six and a half inch and just working scissor over comb. Uh, fatter blade, longer blade allows me to get better workflow through the back. Now we'll cut that pretty much at a 90 degree. And then we're going to start by... Uh, bringing the hair out, and we're going to hold this down. Um, it's a, at about a 45 degree angle um, coming off of the head here. I'll show you the elevation in a little bit, but just working stationary guide, bringing the hair square back to me. So straight back to your chest. Your chest should be parallel with the section and, over, and directing the hair back towards you, um, taking little sections at a time. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to grab some of the old hair that I cut and then some some of the new hair. So let's say I grab 30% of uh, new hair to 70% guide because I want to make sure I have a thick guide to work from, but I don't want the guide to come from the entire head because the head shape we know shifts. So I want to make sure that I have plenty of, uh, of guideline, but I don't want to stretch that guide up to meet uh, the new hair. If you have questions about that, post them in the comments, but I, uh, hopefully that was clear. Now, we're working across, same, just cutting a square shape in the back. It's real simple. Um, the, the hardest part about it is just staying consistent with it. So I grab my guide from the occipital bone area of the previously cut section. So um, just grabbing a little bit of that, clip the rest away, and then start with my square back line. Just working those half inch partings through the haircut, scooping up some of the old, adding the new, keeping the consistency there.
for me, haircutting is all about kind of like a rhythm through the haircut. So um, I try to stay consistent with the partings, with my body position, with um, you know the way that I cut the hair. Even right before I make the cut, there's certain things that I do. It's it's all about if you can have a rhythm, you can have consistency. So um, just find your flow in a haircut. It's probably not going to be the same as mine. Um, just like mine isn't the same as everyone else's, but you'll find, you just got to find your rhythm in there. All right. And that is our square back. You can see it's a slight elevation, but not a lot. Um, I did the slight elevation because I like having a little bit of a beveled edge to the graduation. If you want it to be completely flat, uh, at zero degree, kind of a zero degree feel, uh, one length feel, I guess would be better to say, um, then you, you just don't do any elevation in there. So that was just going through cross-checking and now we're gonna work the side panel. So again, I comb some of the top hair away and, and part it away, and I just work from the bottom section directly behind the ear. That's where I grab my guideline from, and then I bring everything out to me. Slightly elevating again, giving it a nice little beveled edge so it doesn't look too heavy, um, depending on the hair type. Maybe if it was curlier hair, I would, um, I would not elevate it as much. But because it's straight hair, I want to have a little bit of a bevel just to build some more shape into the haircut. There we go. The other thing is I'm not going around the face. I'm over directing it to me to cut that straight line, which is going to push a little extra weight towards the front. We're going to go in and cut that off in the fringe anyways. But um, for it to be a true squared shape, Everything needs to come back to me. You can't round it around the face. Just following those horizontal sections through the horizontal partings. And now we'll blow it dry. Using a flat wrap technique um, just to get the shape of the head put into the haircut and then we'll go through and iron it really quick so my big focus with the flat wrap is to get the um the basic shape of the head and get the root of the haircut and the root of the hair style to have kind of a flexible feel to it so there's no calyx no weird things in the haircut then i go through with my iron and i polish the ends so the blow dry is for the base of the hair. I'm not really focused on the ends. Then I can go through uh, with my Bricado Vibra Straight Iron and just polish the ends off. Now I'm gonna lift the hair into my comb. I'm back to my Blacksmith Fit uh, 6.5 inch scissor and I'm gonna work across to cut the fringe. Holding it in the comb. I like using a comb with a little bit I don't, you don't want to have too tight of teeth. This is the YS Park 334 comb. I like it. Um, I start off by cutting the line and then I slowly lower the comb, which um, kind of allows me to round off the shape a little bit. I just think it makes it fall a little softer. So as we add the finishing touches to the haircut, just a little bit of detail work in there. I um, hope you guys enjoyed this haircut. We're going to show you the final result at the end. Uh, make sure that you share this haircut with your friends. And if you guys want to see a specific haircut, please post in the comments below and follow us on Instagram and Facebook because we're always looking for new ideas and really to see what inspires you guys and what we can do for you. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Check us out on freesaloneducation.com.
All right, so guys, today's vlog, we focused on something a little bit different. I started out the day with a completely different plan uh, and then halfway through the haircut realized that I didn't hit the record button so totally screwed up the video. So I ended up going with something fun. Today what I did was I had some fun with the razor. We used the Donald Scott carving comb again. Uh, this is definitely the week of the razor. And uh, I used the orange haired mannequin, which you can see my hands are uh, stained and dyed. So here is the cut. We went with a mohawk feel, some fun orange hair color from Brian. The technique on the top to actually do the mohawk is really simple and also going through the edges and the sides we did with a razor again, so uh, really fun technique. The versatility with this cut is definitely there, um, so even though it's really fun out of the box and crazy, um, I, I can't even say it's crazy. It's really kind of tame at this point in, in the world and in life. Um, but really fun haircut. Definitely enjoy the step-by-step -step video. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you like this style of cut, um, we can keep doing stuff like this. Maybe on Fridays we can have some more fun. Uh, so I'm excited for you guys to see it. Here we go with the step-by-step -step of our Mohawk haircut. Okay, so putting this video together, I'm actually really excited to show you guys uh, this haircut. It's really a fun technique and uh, it's even fun to section it out. So we're gonna start off by doing that. Uh, we're gonna take partings along the parietal ridge. Um, depending on the density of the hair, you may want to take this section a little bit skinnier or a little bit fatter. And really, depending on what type of mohawk you want, you would take it skinnier or fatter as well. So get creative with that. Um, we created that square, went pretty much a long parietal ridge on this mannequin back to uh, across mid crown. And then we create another rectangle shape um, below that. And that's going to go down to the occipital bone. And then from the occipital bone down to the nape, we do uh, another ponytail. So the two ponytails, the one in the nape and the one right above occipital are directly off, but you can see the top ponytail is over directed back. What that's going to do is give me over direction in the cut later on and prov provide me more length uh, in the front of the head. So we're going to take diagonal forward sections to cut. We're using the carving comb from uh, Donald Scott. Again, it's available on Free Salon Education. Super cool tool. It's like 35 bucks, uh, somewhere around there, maybe 39 but uh, such a cool tool for doing razor cutting. Uh, we're using the 100% carved side for now. Uh, what that's going to do is cut just like a razor, but these blades are super sharp, uh, really firm, and they just do a really good job of cutting. The other thing that's great is I'm gliding through the hair. Um, I've really fallen in love with this prepare uh, liquid tool glide. It really does allow the razor to glide through the hair because the hair feels so conditioned uh, while I'm cutting. So everything's being overdirected straight out. I'm cutting it at a basic 90 degree angle following the head shape. What I want this to look like is pretty much a grown out mohawk. Um, I wanted this to have more of a feminine feel. Uh, it still could be feminine if you took it really short. The other thing with this is I am cutting it on a mannequin, so I do like to leave a little extra length um, because it can stick straight out from the head. But this, I like the the, uh, the freedom of this haircut and the length on the sides. I, I really dig that with this mohawk. So that's the sides. The sides are very easy, cut straight out at 90 degrees. Now we're going to determine the length of that we want our mohawk. So I check the side length, see where I'm at, and then I just go in and I cut the ponytail, um, which makes this really easy. So it's, it's really condensed cutting at its finest at this point. Um, so I'm going to go in and carve off and get that length to where I want it on each ponytail. Um, you, what I love about this is you can really see the mohawk come to life uh, right in front of your eyes as you're cutting it. Uh, so you can see it right there. So I match up all my lengths. I'm happy with that. I comb out the uh, ponytails. And with that liquid tool glide, you can see how easy even the ponytails slip out of the hair. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'm going to do some point cutting now with the carving comb. So this is a really fun technique that you can do with the carving comb because both sides cut. So there's a 100% carved side, which we talked about. That's going to cut 100% of the hair. And then there's a 50% carved side that will cut 50% of the hair. Uh, that's great for adding texture and thinning. 
But when we go in to do this point cutting technique, all I'm doing is I'm elevating the hair and then I'm shifting that razor back and forth on top of my fingers, just running it back and forth. And that's cutting on both sides. So it's not necessarily taking a perfectly straight line across. So that's why we consider it point cutting because you're just removing some bulk and adding uh, even more texture to the edges of the haircut. Uh, so you're going to see I'm kind of over directing. I'm taking out the heaviness on each side of the front of the haircut because we did over direct it back. There are heavy corners that are going to happen right at the recession point of the head. So just going through and, you know, taking off those corners helps with the overall look of the haircut. Now we're going in with our 50% carved side uh, of the razor. So that's a good look at it right there. So I'm just sectioning horizontally and then working through just sliding that 50% carved side down. And now I'm just gonna use the 100% carved side to take off the, the kind of tail part that happens in a mohawk. Now, some people like that, so you could leave it on. I tend to, I like it a little bit, but I like to have, um, I don't like it that long throughout. So now we're going to start to blow it dry. Um, especially with the mannequin, I'm going to do a lot more emphasis on blow drying the sides uh, forward and then the top back. So really just making the uh, root of the hair pliable, going in every direction. You could call this a flat wrap, but it's not really flat wrapping. Uh, what I'm doing is working back and forth, and I'm taking the hair and, and, and blow drying the heat and actually creating that volume uh, back on the head. So I want to basically create this mohawk shape without even putting any product in it whatsoever. So then when I go to put the product in, this is the uh, Carve Cream Wax from Bacato. Um, you guys can use any kind of like wax that you have um, to definitely check it out. This has a really light hold, so you're not going to, um, you would actually use some hairspray after this. But just going in and molding that up, you don't want to try to use the product to force the mohawk in. You want to blow dry the mohawk in and then just enhance it with product, which will help give it that longevity and hold. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this cut as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and get alerts on all of our new videos every day at 10 a.m. All right, guys, thanks so much for checking out today's vlog. Make sure that you post in the comments below what you thought of the cut. Also, what cut you'd like to see in the future. And uh, hit the like, hit the share button, share it with all of your friends. That is the end of today's vlog.